Welcome to Factorio Masterclass. My name is Nilaus and this is the series of tutorials and guides here on YouTube covering all aspects of the game and aims to provide insights and resources to help you improve as an engineer. In today's episode, we are going to do blue circuits or processing units as they are actually called. This is one of those tricky builds that uh, when you build it first, it looks okay, but it's very difficult to scale up because it uses so much green circuits. So what we're going to do is make an upgradable build that will transition through various stages of the game and should last you all the way to the end. Let's dive in. Each episode of the Factorio Masterclass starts out as a workshop over on my Twitch channel. This is twitch.tv slash Ninos. The link is in the description below. If you want to drop by, then I'm streaming these workshop sessions on Mondays at 8 p.m. Central European time. And you're very welcome to drop by. This is a great opportunity to discuss and design together. And every time we do something, I learn something new. And I think most people who join also learn a thing or two. If you like this kind of video and want more of that, then hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this so you can catch the next one when they get released. If you have ideas, comments or feedback, leave them in the comment section below or join the Discord where we are more than 5,000 members discussing various games, mostly Victoria though. Let's look at this design of the blue circuits. I'm going to call it blue circuits because processing unit is so unintuitive. This one is the core design challenge here is actually going to get the 20 electronic circuits inbound. And of course, we also have to manage the fluids as well. So this will be an inbound challenge. Let's start by building something from scratch, which may look strange, but my design here is that, well, my design principle is that I want to make something that can easily be upgraded as you transition from the very first iteration all the way to, uh, to the end. Blue circuits is an essential part of the science, yellow science, the utility science, so you need to build this, uh, the blue circuits, before you can even go into the yellow science. Now, I am always building yellow science before purple science, because you really unlock better tech with your utility science, in my opinion. And you're also processing units and flying robot frames are more important to get before for robots and for processing units. So that's why I'm always doing this one first. Therefore, for this design, the first, first iteration of the design, we do not have access to blue belts or yellow Mark III assemblers. Therefore, we're going to start making it with red belts and blue assemblers. Let's give it a shot. Obviously, we're going to start making some of these 9, 10, 11. Now, the reason why I'm making it 11 is quite simply that this will be what I need later on. Oops. There. 3, 1, 2. Three. Okay, so this will be the design we're building. If I do this part, now I'm going to use a mod called max rate, max rate calculator to make it drag across. And that gives us, if we're feeding this properly, we are going to only produce 1.65 green circuits, sorry, blue circuits per second. And using 33 green circuits per second. That's a bit more than one belt, one red belt. So that's what we're going to aim for here. Let's start by hooking up power. Right now, power is set up because it's a test world, but we definitely need it for our own world. So let's build it here so that we can cover everything. Yeah. Max distances in horizontally. And then we need to get some green circuits in. I'm going to get the green circuits in here and similarly down there. Of course, need to. Go under the substation. There we go. And now in bounce. One, two, two. It might look a bit strange, but I again I promise that it'll all make sense when we get to the very end. That's going to be here, and we are, of course, going to be some lights here and there. That one. There. So now we have lights included as well. Now we're going to do a separate trick, and that is actually we are going to take in the middle two lanes here. We are going to get the red circuits inbound. Inbound here, here, here. And we are going to get the blue circuits outbound 
below. Should be enough. Yes. And we can now use the red belts, or the red inserters. They can actually overlap. So this one will pick up the red, output the blue. Down here, it will pick up the red and output the blue. And then we'll take this one, copy it to the other locations. Not the last one. And there. So now we have all of the materials inbound, except the liquids. And this is where things get complicated. Because the thing is, we have to remember that I actually want beacons eventually. I want beacons to be here. Uh, actually, not there. We will not have the beacons for this build yet. But I need to make sure that I leave this space open for later on. That means we're unfortunately going to have to make some kind of convoluted designs for piping. If we do like this, then it is actually fired up as it should be. And the way we can then connect it is going like this in a very weird way. And then we can take these out because they are not supposed to be here for this design. But we can continue this design over here and that will now hook up now let's give this a shot and see if it works just to give it a chance and we are going to use some special infinity loaders to simulate inputs and outputs we're going to make the output here a bit longer so we can see the flow of it yeah we are going to add this mod pack uh, mod that i'm using is called editor extended and it's really nice for making test designs and I'm using all the time during the workshops. And they also exist for liquids. And this is where we add sulfuric acid inbound. And let's have a look if it works. Each of these are produ providing 30 per second, but this whole design is only consuming 33. So each of these belts will be quite a lot slower than they need to. And there we go. We start having things thrown out on the belts. And this will give us 1.65 per second. Everything is working. And that's going to be the first iteration of this build. So you have built this. And I can guarantee you that almost immediately upon building this, you're going to be dissatisfied with how slow it's producing. Now, you still don't have the production science. So you still can't use any of the modules Mark III, assembly machine Mark III, or blue belts. But you want to get the maximum possible you can out of it, given the available resources. Because you found out that blue circuits are producing really slowly and you want more of it. So what can you do? Well, what you can do is you can each, you can basically say, we're going to use this design, but we are going to pump it up so that it uses exactly one full belt here and one full belt. So instead of the current one using 33 per green circuits per second, you are going to increase it into a design that uses 60 green circuits per second, because that's as much as we can expect to get out. And then we're going to, on top of that, add productivity modules, Mark 1. Now that just only slow things down, but it will uh, be necessary. And now we uh, go into the module part. With this, we have exactly enough modules, or exactly enough room for modules. We are going to dig it. Mark one modules out here, but it's that's not going to be enough. So we're also going to make it up top as close as we can get, and and also on the other side. There. This will of course take up more, both more space on the base. It'll consume more green circuits, and it's using more power. However, what the output is, we are again using max rate calculator to get a snapshot of how much it's now doubled the production it has increased it to 60 consumption so any additional beacons here wouldn't make a difference because we will be fully consuming the belt when it reaches sort of a, a standstill so this will help speed along the base it's going to be a bit better but it's certainly not going to be the end game what i really want to do is now we sort of move forward in time until you have the production signs you have the mark three Assemblers, you have blue belts, you have the Mark III modules, and you want to get the absolute maximum 
out of this build with this blueprint or with this footprint. In order to do that, we are going to design it not against two red belts, that's 60 per second, but actually against four blue belts. And yes, all of this here can actually consume four blue belts if we just uh, upgrade it as much as we can. Before we dive into the final form of this one, the final late game design that I'm actually really proud of, let me just take a moment to thank all of the fantastic patron supporters who are pledging and making it possible for me to continue making YouTube videos if you want to support the channel and the work I do here, then uh, pledging on Patreon is pretty much the best way to do that. So thank you very much for everyone who has pledged and helped support. Thank you. Let's take a look at how we upgrade this. The first thing we want to do is basically just do an upgrade of everything. I have prepared an upgrade planner with this. You can see we are changing the red belts to blue belts. We're changing the Mark 1 modules to Mark 3 modules. And we are changing the blue assemblers to yellow assemblers. Let's go. Now the yellow assemblers can actually take more modules. So let's start by putting the more modules in. And that's done. I'm also going to add extra beacons out here because that just that just happens to fit perfectly with our consumption. Now we're going to again use the max rate calculator to take a look at what this would theoretically maximum be. This would theoretically maximum consume 182. It's going to be capped at 180. 180 which is four blue belts of green circuits but it's also like producing a massive impressive 12.7 blue circuits per second which is really nice now how do we get there because as you can see we only have two blue belts inbound and this is where the the trick of the design in the beginning comes in now if i cut it here it actually so happens that the first one two three four five and a half can actually easily consume all that there is. So what I need to do is I need to make a separate line here. It's going to jump to this location. Jump here. Jump all the way over on the other side and it's going to go back. I'm going to rotate that one and then it's going to go back here. So I tried a different version where where I was basically taking two belts in and I merged them over. It doesn't work. You have to do it this way because it needs a full belt in here, which will saturate some of it. And then the other full belt going here and then the residual will be consumed by this one. So you can see this one will be working fully all the time. And I'm gonna do the same down here. Now let's let, let it run. We should be seeing that this belt comes in. Now we can see this belt is full when it starts, when it hits the first assembler and that the belt here never stockpiles because the whole thing is designed to, to be able to take 182, but I can only provide 180. So it's extremely close to being perfect ratio. It also means that every single one will always be working. And the great thing, greatest thing about this one, if you want to use it if you for some reason have more belts or maybe you have a train station or something then it's very easy just to scale it and you can reuse the beacons on the side so here you have it what i'm providing is i'm providing a blueprint book that contains the first the second and the third blueprint so that you can easily stamp down depending on where you are in the transition of your base or if you are building one and i can't remember how to manually do the upgrades then you can also just stamp down the next on top once you've done the upgrade planning. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial on how to make a, what I would say is a really good scalable, tileable blue circuit build that will last you from the very first time you unlock and decide you need some blue circuits until definitely can launch many rockets with this build. Hopefully you are still awake and I, you are somewhat entertained and maybe even educated a bit on a new and let's say unique design for blue circuits if you are then uh, how about hitting the like button something i've also noticed is that lately the percentage of viewers on my channel that are subscribed has decreased i think that's because there are more new new people watching so if you're a new 
new person watching and you're not subscribed well i'm hoping that uh, with these tutorials that i can earn your subscription if that's the case thank you very much and if you want more content then i'm also streaming over on twitch i'm streaming let's plays tuesdays thursdays and sundays at 8 p.m central european time the address is twitch tv slash nilos and it's really awesome when people drop by and i think a lot of people who uh, come on over find out that it's really cool to hang out and talk in real time and be part of the design process so i hope to see you either here on youtube on discord or over on twitch thank you very much for watching and until next time Stay effective.